All right, so we got our brand new air conditioning unit in. You can see it's working hard in this Texas heat to try and keep it cool in the house. So what we're gonna do now is go around the house, square up the doors as best we can, get everything removed that we need to before the painters come in. The power's on, obviously. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all these light fixtures. These are all gonna end up getting replaced. Same thing with all the ceiling fans. Um, this funky little light right here. Um, I might end up deleting that. We'll probably delete that, put four recess cans in here and the ceiling fan in here. We're going to go ahead and they had to remove the uh, door jam in order to get the new unit up in the attic. So we're going to have to do some repairs on that. Um, our painter is going to go ahead and touch up the sheetrock where we've got a couple cracks from where there were some foundation issues. Um, we're going to go remove this weird trim um, super duper old school you might still see that in some dining rooms um, formal dining rooms but we're not going to do that we're going to remove the baseboard throughout before the painters come in because after the painters do their part we're going to come in redo the floors put the baseboard on let them come back and do a final paint on the baseboards and do some touch up throughout some weird things too and here we found big opening behind the uh, sink. I'm guessing they had some plumbing repairs done and just never had it patched. And then for some reason here, the baseboard that they've got is like the commercial peel and stick baseboard. So we're going to replace that too. Um, yeah. Lots of oddball things. This guy right here, you might or might not know what this is for. If you do, pause the video, comment below. If you don't, um, you'll find out by the end of the video when you see what we do with it. And then obviously a little hole back here, perfect for the doorknob to fit in. So we'll uh, get that fixed, get some of these places where the foundation is shifted, get the sheetrock fixed up. Again, remove all the weird little trims throughout and then the baseboard. And we'll let our painters come in and get to it. What I mean by areas where the doors are getting pinched is like this up here at the top. How it's getting stuck. You really have to yank it to get it open. In fact, I can't do it while holding a camera. There we go. So what I'm going to do, if you've got something like this, you can take an oscillating tool, just feed it right in that crack, and it'll eventually trim away enough if you Insert it a couple times into different spots. It'll trim it just right so that your door opens and closes without getting snagged. The other thing that it might be, and that's what we have over here, is actually that the hinge is worn or the screws are stripped. You can see when I lift up the door how the hinge moves like that. So if I lift up on the door, it closes fine. So that's not a foundation problem there. That's somebody hanging on the door and the hinge just shifting. So we'll put some new screws in if that takes care of it. Great. If not, we'll have to get some new hinges. So yeah, like I said, we're going to be replacing the floor. All this wood, we're just going to be going over it with the luxury vinyl flooring. I'm not a big fan of getting rid of hardwood floors like this. If someone wants to later come in and refinish all this, hey, great. Love it. This investment property, um, it's not financially responsible to do that with, with what we're looking at on this one. So, yeah, we are going to be leaving the floor in the kitchen, most likely, unless we end up having money in the budget at the end to do it. Um, then we're going to be getting the cabinets painted and the probably putting some new hardware on them. Um, we're going to be leaving this little nook on the end here, probably refinishing that a little bit better. But that's going to be for the microwave since there is none over the oven and because the oven is placed so weird you can't really get a cabinet to go on the end here it's just going to be odd so we're going to go ahead and put the microwave over there instead of doing it built in and have all these cabinets repainted new lights we're going to get granite countertops and probably a new sink it's always fascinating to me doing stuff like this on older homes because you get to see a lot of different changes that have gone on throughout the home. 
Um, and here you can see the paint behind here was green. Um, and at some point they had wallpaper over that. And then that was all painted over with, it looks like it was white at one point and then it went with blue. Um, it's possible the white was from this crib that just went behind it because they didn't caulk it very well. But yeah, it's, it's really interesting seeing, you know, stuff like this in the home as you're doing it, seeing the different layers and changes that have taken place. And All right, so if you're curious what I was talking about using the oscillating tool to get this where it's not so jammed. So we've got all the light fixtures removed. The doors are opening and closing freely now. Um, you know, this one used to get stuck too. Now it works fine. Um, as you can see, most of the light fixtures actually have, I don't know if you can see this without the lights on, but they have boxes. And that's electrical connections have to be made in an enclosure like this, unless the light fixture is rated for self-enclosure like uh, some of your fluorescent fixtures and stuff like that however i noticed that this one on the wall here and this one in the ceiling the ceiling fan here did not have um enclosures so this guy uh, cut the wires off stuffed them in the wall because they were actually powered by this up here so i cut the end that went from here down to this off and stuck that in the ceiling um, to make sure that it's not you're not going to have any energized stuff inside the wall um, And then when we go ahead and put the ceiling pan back up here, we're gonna have to put a What's called a pancake box. It's about the thickness of the sheetrock here and we'll cut out this little section so that there is an enclosure and I'm gonna let the uh, sheetrocker See what he can do to texture this and get it to match. I don't texture well. I know that I'm not gonna waste my time trying to do it um, part of this experience has been knowing your limits and not wasting your time doing things that you know you're not going to be able to do or that you're not going to be able to do efficiently and well so yeah we got the baseboard completely pulled up in this room because in this back corner and through a lot of the sections it was crackling away as I was trying to pull up the quarter round um, which makes me believe there was some rot at some point and it just kind of started flaking away. Um, the rest of the sections, I just pulled up the quarter round. 
because, you know, I can do that. Uh, I can get the form done by just getting it within a quarter inch of the trim and then doing a quarter round to cover it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. We'll let the painter get in here and do his touch-ups and we'll be back.